Oh, hey everyone, and welcome aboard. I'll be your Captain Hillian today, along with... Hey, yes, sir, first major here at your service. And welcome to Showcase Sunday number 83. It's, it still surprises me every time that we just... We, we just made so many of these so far. And just continuing to do with them. But yeah, I have way too big of a games library. Yeah, and, yeah. you do. <clears throat> Anyways, what we do with these is that we, we take uh, four... some uh, we, we showcase some games for about half an hour each. Sometimes we'll go short with them. Uh, to see if they're any good for streaming at another time. And uh, yeah... Today we're starting with Dinkum, which apparently has gotten an upgrade, uh, up, not upgrade, update recently with Bloom and Spring. Or is that, could it be a seasonal thing? Hmm. Might be. Either and also, way, yeah. I think you, something happened uh, on your end uh, today, uh, probably for the first time. No. I think you got to hear a bit of your accent, the Dutch accent. <laughs> okay, could be because I am still a bit sleepy. Yeah, for you, you did a uh, thing. <laughs> like, yeah, like you did a, I don't know what you're, you're supposed to call it. You did it a few times when you greeted everyone. <laughs> okay, uh, let's just move quick and there. Yeah, this game. It's a bit of uh, this game is a bit like Animal Crossing, but in Australia. So let me get the timer, start that, and create character. A long time ago, everything went south. Almost everybody was forced to move to South City, so they literally and figuratively went south. <clears throat> the people of South City lived cold and miserable lives. You were born here. Most people have no desire to leave. But you do, more than anything. And you might have found a way out. The help wanted. Looking for a young go-getter to accompany me to my old home, Hildrake. Voyage and accommodation will be your initial... Okay. <laughs> Didn't get to read the last part. You leave for Hildrake today. Uh, yeah, I think this place could be described in one word, and that it would be drab. Wait... They live in Antarctica or something? <laughs> yeah, I don't think too much gets explained, but... I think this is sort of in a semi-post-apocalypse, though not the nuclear wind or anything. We're now flying over Hildrake and we'll be landing shortly. Nope, now I can click. Nope, all passengers something something. <laughs> okay, you're looking a bit spaced out with how high up your pupils are. Looks like we've landed. I'll tell you what, I'm so glad you've decided to accompany my, me on this adventure, Hill. I was starting to think no one in South City was brave enough to join me. When you were the first and only person to respond to my ad, I knew you were the right person for the job. <laughs> oh dear, look at old Flash waffle on. Let's get cracking, Hill. I'll see you outside then. Simple isometric. Not semi-isometric, just WASD. We can move the camera around, and uh, there goes the grey mobile. <laughs> Like, could that thing be any more grey? Do you mean grey zeppelin? Wow. Smell that fresh air. I'll tell you what, it feels good to finally be back on Hildrick. Now, Hill, I'm going to need to help me... I'm going to need your help getting settled, okay? I'll give you this base tent, take your time and find a good place for it. It'll be like our own town hub. Take this map as well. If you have any questions, please just ask me. And I haven't been back to Hildrake for a very long time, but I think I can still be helpful. I'll be waiting by this dock until you set up the, uh, the base sit, uh, the base tent. So if you get lost, just check your map to find the dock again. Good luck. And yeah, we get our first building to put down. 
and the map of the island, which is randomly generated, I'm pretty sure. Let's see. Yeah, randomly generated, which can end in rather choppy bits like this and such. Uh, this game is still somewhat in early access, so they are still working. That's, this one just really wanted a lot of rivers, it seems. Uh, let's see. I would not be surprised if being by river is a good thing. Well, depending what you're after and how important water is. Yeah, you don't need to drink or anything. Uh, these dogs here are not hostile, only to, well, the kangaroos here. So we can just steal that, because they don't actually go for it. Uh, we can harvest plants. We will be able to cut down trees and such later, dig up dirt to, well, reload, to terraform the area a bit. Uh, let's see. For the moment, it'll be a good idea to just stick close to the dock. There is something I would be looking for, but I can't really see if there are any in the distance. So, yeah, let's just go... Let's Let's just plonk it down over here so we can get going. Just left mouse click. And there. Yes, it's a good place. So this is where we decided to build, huh? It's absolutely perfect. Our new home here on Hilldrake. Thank you so much for setting up the base camp. Base tent. <laughs> and guess what? I actually have a tent for you too. I know it's not much, but it will be a place you can call home. Now, there's plenty of room to spread out here on Real Hill Drake, so please take your time to place your tent. You'll probably be visiting the base tents a fair bit, so keep that in mind if you're looking for a spot to claim as your own. I'll be inside the base tent getting things ready. Come and speak to me once you've placed your tent. And yeah, there isn't really a quote-unquote story going on with this, but yeah, you can expand out your settlement by inviting other people over after they grow a liking to the place and such. I wouldn't be surprised if they add a story later where they have it more fleshed out and more ready to be implemented. Could be. Let's see, we have an inventory. Quite a generous one compared to what you started with in uh, Animal Crossing. And yeah, no need to... We can just walk straight through the flaps. Find a good place for your tents? No, it's not much, but I hope you like your new home. And tell you what, you've got the Spark Hill. You see, most people back in South City are scared of leaving. There's something about that place that pulls the spark out of people. And just the color in general, it seems. But I'll tell you what, we certainly aren't the first to leave. Have you ever heard of the traveling trader John? No, I haven't. I'll tell you what, he's a bloody legend. Rumor is he traded a paperclip for a steamboat once. <laughs> Trading is his, in his very blood. John got in contact with me before he left South City. He's interested in visiting with, uh, at his shop here. And tell you what, we can't miss an opportunity like this. I reckon we get this visiting site deed ready uh, for him. That way we'll have a place ready for any visitors who come to Hildrake, which is how you expand, well, your population here. Because... You'll get people who can make certain things and such, or will sell certain types of things, like flowers, just equipment, and just sign stuff. I'll let you decide where the best place for this visiting site deed is. Just be sure it's close by. We want visitors to feel like part of the Hildred community while they are here. Who knows, maybe we can convince him to set up a permanent shop here. Be sure to talk to me once you've placed this visiting site deed. And yeah, this is how the early start basically goes for a bit. Um, yeah, when you place stuff down, it does need to be on level ground, so it can't be put down here. And we don't have any shovels to move stuff with, so let's just put it right across. Yeah. It will destroy stuff that is in the way. So, well set for visitors, huh? Well done, Hill. We've only been here for a little while, but you've achieved so much already. You remind me of my father. He was born right here on Hildred, you know? He was a true blue adventurer through and through. He loved doing new things and keeping track of all his milestones in his adventurer's journal. 
I wanted to come here and try and meet those milestones myself. But I'm getting a bit long in the tooth, Hill. Please, I want you to take his adventurer's journal. Please keep good, uh, good care of it. This is your adventure now. Yeah, just simple passing on the torch. That journal means a lot to me. And I think my dad would be glad someone like you is looking after it. But I have a challenge for you, Hill. I want you to try and beat my father's milestones. Some of these milestones are going to take a long time to complete, but there is no hurry. I'm also going to add daily tasks to the journal. These will be smaller milestones that uh, should be easy to complete in just one day. That, I'm pretty sure I'm all set milestones. <laughs> now for the good part. For every milestone you surpass, you'll be rewarded with permit points. And I'll tell you what, you're going to want a lot of permit points eventually. But we can talk more about that tomorrow. For now, check out the journal. I think you'll find that you've actually completed some of the milestones inside it. <laughs> it's with that look. <laughs> so be sure to claim them. Now, are you hungry? I am. I think it's just about lunchtime. I've seen fruit growing around this island and that sounds tasty. You go and find us some fruits and when you get back I'll show you how to craft a campfire. Uh, yeah, this isn't a survival game or anything. This is mostly just, like I said, Animal Crossing-like. And looks like another Roo got killed over here. And yeah, there's also bugs you can catch once you get access to a bug net, of course. So let's see. These things are just flowers that we can just harvest and sell later. So they are nice to pick up, but uh, not really useful now. You can brew with them later, I found. But beyond that, they don't have a lot of use. These bush lamps, though, can be useful. Now, uh, let's see. Camper, a place to rest your head. Your new home for now. Here's the milestone for placing your tent. We get 100 points. We want a lot of these because this is how you unlock extra stuff. All right. Explorer. And we've already got this one. These you don't need to claim. You just get the points when you complete them. And yeah, those are randomized each day. It looks like we're going to have a dark town. Oh, you found something to eat? Eating food will keep you, help keep your energy up. Here's the recipe for a campfire. I found those stones earlier. I found these stones earlier, so you can use these to craft your campfire. You'll have to find some wood yourself, though. Feel free to use the crafting bench in the base tent to craft a campfire. Take your time, Hill. When you're done, come and have a chat with me. I have a gift for you. We're gonna cook the campfire, okay? <laughs> yeah. And yeah, we'll unlock bl blueprints as we go from people or as reward for stuff or just outright buying them at certain shops. Yeah. I have to say, I thought the trophy sometimes uh, well, it may not annoy us. Maybe in my annoyed sometimes when games don't specify what's a blueprint. They just use a blueprint as the same thing as a recipe. When they're already different. Yeah. I'm very impressed with the work you've done here today, Hill. I think there's a great future for us all here at Hildrake. Here's a gift for helping me out so much. It's a bug net. I think you should take the rest of the day off. Maybe you should go catch some bugs around here. Or maybe you could cook some of that fruit you found. I'm sure you will. But before I forget, take this sleeping bag too. When you get tired, pop that on the ground and have a lay down. I'll tell you what, a good night rest will do us both good. Thanks for all your help today, Hill. Can't believe we're on Hildrick. Couldn't have done any of this without you. Yeah, you could say this is a rather positive game. <laughs> Sleeping bag. And yeah, there we can grab multiple sleeping bags from here or buy them. And we can just plonk those down every, anywhere outside to have a rest. Because we do have a sort of time limit. Uh, not on the game, but on the days. Like, it, it is 12 p.m. now. And that will go into midnight and such. And at a certain point, you will just get to your stamina bar. The yellow bar underneath the health bar. Uh, we'll just get heavily capped down, so it is a good idea to just get to sleep then. Not that it gets drained by running or anything, 
but it will get drained by like swimming or breaking rocks and such. Or by swinging a bug net. Yeah, that, that took only a really small amount off and it won't regenerate on your own on its own unless you eat something which is well what this the circle around it is for because you can yeah. eat three things at a time they will restore stuff uh, they will restore stamina and or health immediately but also slowly after hmm, I, I am kind of wondering how much like basically how much similarity will it have with uh, Animal Crossing, but also what they will try to do different. Here we go. Yeah, one of the differences is that with those permit points, we can get permits to unlock stuff. So we can basically unlock things on our own. And uh, yeah, we can we can terraform this place a lot more than you can in like uh, Animal Crossing. Also, there's these around. We can't do anything with them yet. Also, so they you will added... use... Yep. Go ahead. Uh, I was say, oh. um, they, so they added some Minecraft to it? A bit, yeah. You can dig down quite a distance, but not like massively. And yeah, I was actually wanting to be near one of these things. Because these are actually teleporters. Not that we can hand put anything in it at the moment. And yeah, they do need repairs. Where those are spawned, I think they are randomized. But I think they generally stick one in each cardinal direction. Like east, west, north and south. And I see there's only a few biomes. So yeah, definitely still in early access. Uh, we have the bushlands. We have deserts. There was a little bit here, Billabong, whatever the hell that actually is supposed to translate to. Tropics, uh, bushlands more, pine forest. It, it's just that, it, yeah, the, the randomization, the, yeah, the terrain generation is just a bit wonky at the moment. So you get stuff like tropics and pine forest right next to each wait, other. Wait, wait, and, is it a bit wonky? Yeah, very That's wonky. That's an understatement. And I think there's another called Badlands somewhere. Hmm. And yeah, just you can have just massive biomes like this here, or just teeny tiny plain bits next to deserts and tropics. Okay. It's time for a nap though, so we can actually move on. And yeah, I don't actually see us streaming this because yeah, there is no real story and such. But it is a nice little game. Oh yeah, it does look nice, but I thought I would play it as well, in a sense. Closest game to this I have I would play with the Hillian would probably start you valet. Yeah. We really should try getting that started up again sometime. And yeah. The And, of course, it's John. <laughs> ah, so you must be Hill. Clutch told me you were the one to thank Nick for getting his pl yeah, this place all set up for me. Thanks for that. I have a feeling we'll be doing a lot of business together. Take a look at my wares and feel free to ask me about anything you're interested in. Now, I make most of my dinks selling exotic items back to South City. I guess you could say exotic means any of the items found here on Hildrake. So, if you find anything, and I do mean anything, you don't want, please drop by and show me. I'll offer you a great price for it. And, yeah, John and his shop are the first way of how we get any money. So, we can just sell some goods. At the moment, we can't really do anything with these bugs, so we might as well sell them. As well as these flowers and the meat, then. Uh, 4,000. Okay. <laughs> Something in there is worth a lot. Probably one of the bugs. And, yeah, you will have to start up with uh, rather slow income, but as you go and unlock specific things, you can get a lot more money through those. For now, and we already have a bug net, so we can leave that aside. And yeah, unfortunately, I can't sell you this until you have a logging license. 
license. You okay? Yeah, you need a license to have you know, each of these. So that is rather annoying, you could say. So let's talk to Fletch about that. Ah, good morning, Hill. Did you happen to see that John has set up his tent at the visitor site? I told him all about you and how you've helped us get started here. I sounded impressed. John trades all sorts of things back to South City. I reckon nearly anything you can find on this island will be of value to him. Will be valuable to him. He'll buy fruit, fish, bugs, and even rocks. That also sells a lot of useful tools. He's got mining equipment, logging tools, and even some um, fishing equipment. Although, probably can't sell you a lot of tools until you have all your licenses in order. You know about license, right? Nope. So we might as well get the well, might as well get the <coughs> explanation. Licenses are an old South City idea. I'll tell you what, you didn't need a license for anything back when I was growing up. But these days you need a license for everything. Luckily, I'm actually an accredited license giver. If you want to apply for a license, come to, and talk to me. You'll have to spend some permit points to get them, but if you keep doing milestones, you'll make enough in no time. As you get better at doing certain tasks, new license levels will open up too. That is what with the, the, end, <coughs> the end day screen there was. Uh, when you get to certain levels in certain stuff, like foraging and such, uh, <coughs> more licenses will come become unlocked here so it is a good idea to keep doing basically anything of anything <laughs> now let's see if there's a license you can pl apply for right now and yeah we can we can get one of these right now let's see excavation for shovels fishing for fishing rods logging for axes and the mining license let's actually get the logging one And yeah, now we can go buy an axe and just clear out a bunch of trees. Yeah, these start out pretty, you know, these are pretty cheap, but you can only buy one of these each day or before he sets up his own shop each visit. So you'll want to grab, a, you'll want to grab a good collection of these. And yeah, starting item, starting equipment is rather weak. We can upgrade uh, our own. St we can upgrade stuff like this later, but for that we will well first need an upgraded license as well, as well as materials to actually upgrade things with. Okay, some gum nuts with which we can actually plant things. And okay. Also, with an axe or basically anything that isn't a butterfly net, we can just break these barrels and collect old stuff. And can we actually sell this to you right now? Apparently not. Uh, yeah, <laughs> he, he will buy bees nests, but only when he has his own shop set up. Oh, dear. Hello in the chat there, Jess. <laughs> How are you doing today? Hello, Leo. Yeah. <laughs> Ah! <laughs> Hello, Leo, yes! What the heck happened to my voice there? A frog got in it? Or out it? No, probably would not escape. Okay, yeah, welcome to Showcase Sunday, Jess, where, well, we show off some games for about half an hour each, and how long do we have on this one still? Phone. There we go. Okay, about three minutes. And yeah, basically to judge if these games are any good for streaming sometime. But uh, yeah, this game is nice and all, but it's not much for streaming. Uh, at, least at least not for us, at time. least. Yeah. Uh, let's see. I'm doing good. Just eating some cookies. Okay. Lucky you. No. We can sell some of these logs, these gum nuts. I think I actually will buy cookies tomorrow. For... Yeah, I don't think I haven't, I haven't bought cookies in a decade, perhaps. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Yeah. You'll want that these table saws are you are, you'll want a few of these. Since we can actually turn these logs into planks with this, which for one sell better and are required yeah, are required for some things. And yeah. Our stamina is running low because Axe simply put sucks. 
So just eat some foods. Happy to regenerate our stamina some. And hmm. there we go. Let's put that down. And just, then we can just run these logs through and get ourselves some logs. Or not some logs, oh, some planks. <laughs> uh, I could see us theme these. If they add more story and more things to do, that would make it worthwhile. But from what I saw on its uh, version I, uh, number, I guess they are slightly over halfway through. Uh, could be. It, it How long it can take from one to go from one version to another can vary a lot. But uh, yeah, nice game. Yeah, maybe sometime for just relaxed streams, but not for <clears throat> not for any main story streams and such. Yeah, and the well, the, the number one relax if you have so far would probably be Slam Rancher Two. Yeah, which has been updated recently with the new area. Nice. Okay. We also have these, the dried, dried grass, which is, yeah, it gives you spinax tufts. That is used for some things. It's not like the grass here. It needs to be specifically dried out. Uh, yeah, one complaint I do have about this game is that it doesn't really tell you how to get some of the items you need for certain things. So it would be nice if they put in, like, hints uh, <clears throat> on stuff like that. For now, though, I think that'll do. So let's stop this this <laughs> seconds earlier. Like I, I pressed this, uh, I stopped the timer at exactly one second extra now. So let's reset that and move on to the second game we have prepared for today, which I don't think will need much uh, introduction once it's loaded in. Oop. Yeah, don't starve. <laughs> I, I won't stop. I'm having just eating up a Dutch pear. It's... Hmm. The window just got a bunch more, a uh, bunch smaller for some reason. Can I? Yeah. Let me... Okay. Actually, I should probably say this right off. I have been having my eyes on this game a few times. Okay, and nice little thing about this game, when you adjust the size of the window, it actually changes, it actually keeps the aspect ratio, so you don't have to fiddle around with getting it to specific heights and widths for it to actually work. Okay. Nice. And yeah, this game got quite popular back in the day. It's got some a few expansion bits and even a, a watery version, I believe. Yeah, and, and yeah. of course, the uh, crossovers. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Character, we can select a bunch of characters. We have Wilson, the, the, the gentleman scientist. I will conquer it all with the power of my mind. Rose Magnificent Beard. We have the fire starter. Hmm? <laughs> we have Willow, the fire starter. Things are so much prettier when they burn. Immune to fire damage, has a sweet lighter, lights fires when nervous. So, yeah. Then we have Wolfgang the Strongman. I am mighty, no one is mightier. Grow stronger with a full belly, is afraid of monsters and dark. So yeah, each of these characters have oh. their own strengths and weaknesses. Which Wilson basically being the default. Then we have the bereaved, Wendy. Abigail, come back, I'm not done playing with you. Is haunted by her twin sister, who's comfortable in the dark, doesn't hit very hard. So, a lot more resistant to insanity effects. But rather weak for combat. And then we have uh, WX78, the Soulless Automaton. Empathy mode not responding. Not a picky eater. Module. Not module. <laughs> <laughs> Is charged by lightning but damaged by water. Can upgrade with gears. I, I think this one is. Hmm, I don't know if he's immune to the insanity effects. But he would be a decent start, I think. And then we have a few that need unlocking. Oh. Waxed? Waxstaff? The Cryptic Founder. Eureka, my destiny awaits. A great inventor, nearsighted, and a delicate stomach. That would be a problem, because this is very obviously a survival game. Yeah, Let's just start with Wilson. 
<laughs> oh, damn it. I would say the other guy would fit you more. Which one? <laughs> Wolfgang? No, no, the one you just found at the last. <laughs> okay, might, might as well, yeah. Uh, you let's both see. are kinda inventors. A quicker start in a harsher world. A dark twist in the standard Dark Star experience. That sounds like permanent night time. Okay, it, it has been absolute years since I last played this. So, what, for example, when I last played this, seasons weren't a thing with this game yet. And let's see. Okay. This must be lightning, even though it doesn't really give an explanation. Um, let's see, land branch, what does that mean? Land loop, probably that it circles around or something. Season start, summer. Uh, yeah, let's just go as that and start. And also start the timer. And yeah, one of the main things about this game is just the art style. Yeah. Nictof what the heck is nyctophobia? Say, pal, you don't look so good. And you'd better find something to eat before night comes. That <laughs> even here, the near side of this has effect. Okay, we can move around with WASD. I don't get why my mouse is showing over there. On my end, it's right over him at the moment. But maybe if I just reselect the game. No, it's yeah. just over there for some reason. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. We can interact with stuff. And, yeah, we're going to need... We're going to need to make stuff to be able to survive. Because, like I said, survival game. And this near silence is going to be a real annoyance. Let's see. Blue mushroom. Is it? Is it? Again, uh, it's been one of the, this is one of the things I've been having for a very long time on a maybe. Oh, cargo boats. Okay, apparently he gets real confused about what stuff is when you get at a distance. Theoretically, it could be what? Okay. I think, we did a, I think we did the right choice. <laughs> Okay, nettle rolls, really? Okay. Yeah, there, so there is a... Okay, we're starting right at the water, it seems. Not sure if that's a good or bad thing. Carrot, we'll want that. Uh, let's see, over here we have our crafting system. Or crafting menu. We can make an axe. Give it a little tingle. <laughs> <laughs> and then just start chopping. Because with any survival game, you're going to need wood sooner or later. Okay. Uh, I believe there is a button to just... Okay, spacebar to just get to work. So you don't have to keep the mouse clicked. So I think you should be able to food. go for the stump as well. You should be able to. The really big salmon fancy lamp. <laughs> Okay, I think we, we're probably going to need a shovel to get those out. Yeah, for a better act. Let's see. For the moment, it is best to just explore for the moment. We should have a map, yeah, with tab here. It keeps track of most of the stuff that is around here. And yeah, we're starting in a rather safe area, but of course there's going to be very unsafe areas later on. And while this game does have a story, it would take a long time to actually get to it. Or get through it. But yeah. there is an ending. Let's see. We need more flint for a pickaxe. And we need a science machine to actually start researching stuff. Let's see. We have a campfire we can make. A torch. And a fire pit if we had more stones. And let's see. Science. We need gold for the science machine and stones. So for now, we'll just have to keep going. Some seeds should be good for later. Yeah, I like the art style. Yep. 
I think one of the reasons I not bought this if it was I can't make my own custom character as far as I know. I even investigated the mods a few ba years back. Okay. And like, there are mods that are more skins than your own character. Alright. However, I do respect the game a lot. Yeah, it, it's it's been going for quite a while. Oh, oh yeah. Speech is rapid. Yeah. I, I think actually... I have a few times, uh, probably many times, we watch people play this game. Let's build the campfire. And yeah. When we are in the dark and such, our sanity will start to drop. And uh, yeah, anyone who has ever even heard of a. Uh, uh, what was. I've forgotten the freaking name. Uh, Sanity's Requiem was the subtitle. Eternal Darkness. Anyone who's even heard of the game Eternal Darkness will have even the slightest understanding of what sanity effects are. As in, well, the, <laughs> the game starts fucking with you. And we'll want to keep this fire fed. Here we go. It makes it bright, shine brighter, of course. But it won't fully stop our sanity de depletion. But next to that, we have our stomach, which, well, we'll want to keep this full, otherwise we will start hurting. And the one we we really want to keep full is our health. Yeah, and I... Hmm... It, would we be able to stream Eternal Darkness? Uh, oh. I think it's console only, but I could maybe All find right. an emulator. Oh yeah, oh yeah, I don't remember. We, we, you prefer to avoid emulators if possible. Uh, for games that I have, that we can play otherwise. It's like uh, for the Switch and such, I do have the capture card and so, so I would rather use that. But for for older games where emulation is basically the only way to, I would be up for you know, <clears throat> for. Uh, yeah, let's I would be up for streaming those through an emulator. Like, there's no way I'm going to get, like, a Game Boy Advanced or something to really connect. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, he starts out with spectacles. Uh, let's see. Yeah, th this should make things easier for you. Yeah, but they are equipment, so they will degrade over time. Oh. We'll have to find a way to make more of those. Let's feed the fire. Yeah. Make more or repair, if repair is possible. Yeah, it's, it's already starting to degrade. And yeah, you really don't want to be out in just the, the darkness like this. Let's keep feeding this thing. Wood is a really important resource, as you can see. Perhaps even more important than food. Speaking of, let's cook some of these. And apparently he really I, likes carrots. I <laughs> heavily disagree with him. To this day, I can't eat carrots. No. I, I, as in, my body refused to swallow it. Okay. Uh, let's see. And the only way possible to swallow it is if I have milk. Which actually make it taste worse. Okay, so uh, yeah, screwed if you do, screwed if you don't situation. Yeah. I had to try other drinks like water and soda. But nope, I need to have milk to swallow it. And again, worse in flavor. I don't know why my body refuses. Like, the few other times I actually been able to swallow carrots is when they've been, you know, shredded into tiny bits into uh, minced meat or something like that. That bolognese and all that. But it's hidden. Then it's easier to swallow, but... If not, like, just a... Just shredded carrot on the side or a whole carrot? Yeah, no, I... My body outright refuse. Okay. I don't so, know why. I, yeah. Like, I just shoo and shoo. Everybody tries to swallow? Nope. 
Is there a name for that? Not sure. Okay. So yeah, we really want to keep yeah, we really want to keep a storage of woods to feed and a fire as we go through the night. And yes, yeah, since there is also the well the seasons uh, stuff, you'll want to be able to get up a good amount of food as well to be able to last through the uh, this, through the winter. Yeah. Uh, oh, I just remember something. Should you also be very careful when chopping wood? Yeah, because there is a rare chance that you'll run into something else. Yeah, like I think there is a condition where, like, if you're chopping too much wood in a short time period or set fire to it, you may spawn something very angry. Yeah, there's a lot of hidden stuff like that in this game. And we found ourselves in plains, it seems, where, well, we have these rabbits, which are a good source Wait. of food. Those are not rabbits. rabbits. Let's see, yeah. Uh, That's a yakalope. Yes, there goes an incredible metamorphosis at the, uh, at the proximity of a psychic attack. What? And, yeah, each character will have different things to say when they are examining stuff. Okay, and why does the game call these rabbits? But they are obviously jackalopes. Oh, wormhole. Okay. I don't like the way the wormhole is moving. Yeah, and you have good reason to, because for one, we don't know where the hell it actually goes. And yeah, as you can see, when I mouse over something, yeah, it's not where the mouse is actually being shown on the game, so that's a bit of an oddity. That actually is second mouse oddity. Though, if it, this the... Actually, yeah. Is it the second if uh, a have a mouse oddity? Dude, this one is probably just more on the OBS then, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. <clears throat> it's a lot less harm... It's a, a lot less annoying better word than the, the one in Tomb Raider Underworld. Yeah, uh, this you're still gonna have to investigate. Okay, we can make a grass suit. <laughs> okay. Uh, because, yeah, of course, if there's a survival game, there's combat. Uh, speaking of survival... Okay, we can make a trap with a bit more grass. We can also make these garlands with a bunch of petals, which is good. Because those actually help restore your sanity, some I believe. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, no thanks on that. I just remembered something. No. Uh, I don't know if this is a false memory or what, but I think I heard that it was plans to make a Don't Starve animated series? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm sure he. Uh, mm. Again, this might be a false memory. Uh, where did we leave that campfire? Then again, it might have just decayed. Uh, but yeah, a, a good thing to do would probably be to just set up close to a bunch of berry bushes close together. Um, I think you can move the bushes. Uh, yeah, you once you get a shovel, I think you can... You can pull them out and plant them somewhere yourself, but you will need uh, fertilizer to get them to grow again, I think. But yeah, overall, this is a good game, but it is it would be rather long for our type of streaming because there would be there would just be streams that would pretty much only be grinding, like getting resources. And fighting stuff, of which we haven't actually found anything to fight yet. I think this is one of the games that works better on YouTube or in groups. Yeah, there there is Don't Starve Together as well. This is the original version. Interrupted there. And yeah, as you can see, the world generation in this game is can also be a bit odd. We just yeah, a little gap keeping 
two bits of planes together. So yeah, it's, it's just not uh, <clears throat> it's just not something for us really. Uh, but still a good game. Bunch of flint Ooh, yeah. up there. Oh yeah. Wait, I probably already said that, that if we were to stream this, it would be a YouTube series only. Yeah. Which would have a lot of... Oh, hello. Okay, we can pick these at night. And yeah, we do have a limited inventory. Not sure what this nighter is for. I'm sure. Okay, and apparently it needs to rain before the, plow before the mushrooms will grow again. Okay, for well, now, though, now. Uh, we don't yeah, have enough stones for another. I think you could stream this regularly. Probably is. Yeah. You, when you, if you want to stream this on Twitch, do it with friends or have a case of you doing the grinding off screen and save the streams for when you do something special. Yeah. Like, there is an actual story behind everything, though. Technically, that would be considered more lore, I guess. Both. But yeah, there is an actual ending that you can work to. That will explain more about that guy that popped up next to us, even though we could hardly see him. Let's see. Okay, we can actually re rotate the camera as well. Not sure if that was originally there or not. I'm sure. And let's put this one on since we're not going to go anywhere anyways. I've seen an armor. Evidence which is just getting foggy. I think it's just Yeah, I think it's just putting up random stuff. A Robin Gizzard Stone? What? Yeah, it's just putting in random words. Okay. Eat some berries. Oh, yeah, and berries will go, uh, food will go bad over time. We, you can make a cool box to slow down the decay. But, yeah. You will just need to constantly get new food and such. Okay. Hmm. Luckily, the it, night is a lot shorter than it. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, if someone were to make an animated series of this, would you watch it? I would probably give it a, a shot at the app at the very least. Could be Same. interesting how they do it. Yeah, but it does have an odd style. I feel like they, it could work. Let's see. I'm guessing this nearsighted stuff would be a lot more of a hazard as uh, sanity would go down. It's currently going up, thanks to the garland, I'm presuming. And yeah, we we need to find some place with a lot more rocks than all of this. Because we do need those for... Oop. Okay, this one has been plucked completely clean. Oop. Rock! Sorry, a boulder! Okay, oh no, did we just... Do a reverse version of that Spongebob meme. Okay, just drop this off. Gold nuggets. And... Oh, hello. Five more minutes, really. It's my name. I hope I turned the oven off. Okay. Uh, let's Order. see. What is that over there? Okay. A gnome. A box thing. Evil flower and evil flower. Okay. Some sort of ruin it spawns. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Ruin of someone's garden? Yeah. It has been... Like I said before, it has been years since I originally played this, so my uh, any <clears throat> any advice I have would be well about <laughs> out of touch. Oh, that's a spider nest. Uh, yep. 
connected. So we are actually, yeah, we actually are slowed on the web. Okay. This sounds. Yeah. Oh, we can't actually attack with this thing. Okay. Yeah, it will eventually give up chasing us. And I believe there is a good reason. You know, it is, it is good to destroy spider nests like that. But we don't want to set up shop near it, of course. Oh, I broke this pickaxe. Uh, of you see. did. We have a good amount of rocks and trees around here, so... Oh, the spider is busy with something. Or more are spawning, because what's well, a spider's nest, so of course more are going to spawn. Dear. Uh, yeah, I think this will make a good first base. Okay. This one shouldn't decay. Though a bit early to put it down. Uh, let's see. Science machine. No. That's proximity affects its usability. Okay. Now we can start unlocking things. Okay, we can make a prototype shovel. And unlocks it, and from then on we can just craft it anywhere, if I remember things correctly. A prototype shovel? Yeah, it, it, it does just make a normal shovel. Let's see. Will it be a good idea to eat this? Okay, that was a different noise, so I think it might be doing something else as well. Okay. Uh, structures. Hey, wall. What was that noise? I thought the tree down below you moved. Yeah, they will grow and grow rather loudly at that. All right, I, I was just thinking, please, not the tree man. Please, not the tree man. Let's see, pitchfork, move the ground around. Okay, a razor for your beard. Uh, survival backpack, tell you more stuff. Okay. All right, I'm not sure if that was an error. Uh, we need wood for a chest. That we need to make be able to refine them. We can make ropes. And we need more planks for woods. So, might as well chop down one of the smaller ones here. So, yeah. You are just going to need a hell of a lot of resources to keep things going in this game. So, as well as that, of course, a lot of grinding. Through that. Yeah, this is a slow game. This can be good or bad depending on what kind of game it is and what they are aiming for. Yeah, and what your preferences are. So yeah, now we have to choose between, well, keeping the light going and uh, being able to make other resources. Now though, let's make boards. And now we should be able to do that anywhere. Yeah, but we do still need four logs to make one. And I think four what? logs should be, be able to get you through the night if you start a fire just before nightfall. So again, rather early with that. Wait, wait, hold on. Did you say you need four logs to make a plank? Yeah. Okay, we could make a torch and get around like that, but let's not. Wait, hold on. Usually you get a few planks from a log, not one plank from four logs. Uh, just what the heck? Yeah, that, that is something that uh, I find often annoying in survival games as well, that you just need to get a lot of resources to make a refined resource. Uh, so, yeah, just... It, it is a lot more... Mm, it's a lot less annoying if it's just one-to-one -one or such. Well, but it makes sense, like... A log 
you usually can make a few plank off, plank cost off, depending how big the log is. But four logs to make one plank? That one does not make sense. Let's see. Uh, that that one sounds design. like a poor game design. Let's just make whatever we can. Not going to need that. Oh, we can use it, I'm pretty sure. At the moment. Let's just say something, but is if you're gonna do a refined resource in a game, it needs to somewhat make sense. And then again, these could be really small logs that we're making, but uh, it, it does show to be multiple boards that we are making, but yeah, it is still an, a bit of an annoyance. And yeah, we made it through the night with just a few logs. Probably could just get through on three, maybe. Anyways, we're about to run out of time. These boulders with the, the little gold, uh, the little yellow bits, those are almost certain to contain gold, I think. So let's have a, let's make another pickaxe. And Ooh. actually equip that and mine it. Yeah, there we go, gold nugget. And with gold nuggets, uh, they can they can also just drop from any stone. I'm you know, pretty sure. Uh, let's head back for a second. Oh. Okay, lightning. Bad. Oh, yeah. Lightning can do bad things in this game. Okay, and we need an alchemy engine to make the next thing. Okay. Um, what is needed for an alchemy engine? Okay, just six uh, gold nuggets, two cut stone, and four boards. Okay, I thought we'd have to go out and find stuff for that. Thermal measure? Or... Okay, just... <laughs> the thermometer. And the rainometer. Okay, precipitation probabilities. Okay, so it basically predicting rain. And divining rod. There must be some way out of here. Okay. That would probably point us to specific things. And lightning rod. Okay, that would be really useful. No, would have been really useful. <laughs> because this, this, I speak up, this, the rain stops. But yeah, again... A good game, uh, but not really for our style of streaming. Maybe someday, uh, if we can get some other people to join in, we'll play it for a while, but probably not for the entirety of the story. And let's see, don't worry, yeah. we'll be waiting for <laughs> Always nice when a game does that sort of stuff. Also, yeah, Maxwell will miss you. Oh. And that's not supposed to be in a good way, because I'm pretty sure that was Maxwell who dumped us into this place. <clears throat> oh, oh, yeah. That's two for no so far, but now we're moving on to one that is definitely a yes. Gotta need to center it for a bit. I, I do wish that was more option these days, that if you have a game that's windowed... Uh, come on, capture it. I know you did earlier. Yeah, there we, where if you if you can select windowed mode in a game that you can also select where it is like in the center of the screen or up a bit and uh, yeah that's that gives it right away what this game is huh <laughs> <laughs> so from a game where you go running around scared to where your enemies are running around scared from you <laughs> doom 2016. Oh dear gods. And this we will stream. Yeah, eventually and hopefully rather soon-ish. <clears throat> Just where exactly we'll stick it, that is the question. But uh, yeah. And as yeah. you can see here, I have completed this game on its hard modes. For a bit of context, this is not like the ultra-violence of the previous uh, Doom games where it was like the hardest hard modes. In this game, it's just the hard modes. Oh, yeah. Oh, dear. Let's start the campaign. And I'm thinking I would stream it on Ultra Violence. And, yeah, here we have Nightmare and Ultra Nightmare instead for the harder difficulties. So, yeah, let's just get started. <clears throat> 
So you walk eternally through the shadow realms, standing against evil where all the oldest father. May your thirst for retribution never quench, may the blood on your sword never dry, and may we never need you again. Corex entry 717. They are rage, brutal, without mercy. But you, you will be worse. Rip and tear until it is done. And I forgot to set subtitles on. Yeah, blood and violence <laughs> warnings, everyone. Okay, yeah. G getting right into it, huh? Yep. Uh, wait, can you activate the subtitles? Give me a sec. Oh. Nope. It might be more, the subtitles might be more important later, or maybe actually do stream it. Yeah, but nice to have them here as well. We have to contain this. Open up, and well, <laughs> let's get dressed. That there's even like <laughs> a specific reaction to that demonic invasion going on. Okay. Cannot determine the cause of the demonic invasion until the Resop satellite is brought back online. Samuel Hayden, I'm the head of this facility. I think we can work together and resolve this problem in a way that benefits us both. And, yeah, we, we will find a lot of this sort of stuff. The Praetor suit. Additional relics were found in the tomb alongside the Doom Marine. Some incantation tablets and an ancient combat suit which was given a name, the Praetor suit. When found, it was encased in an inscribed stone tomb. The suit was extracted from the rock, cleaned and subjected to numerous tolerance tests, and found to be almost impervious to any damage. It appeared to have some mechanical function as well. Small receptors in the gloves and chest plate that attracted argent plasma and dissipated it through the, cap the capillary tubes in the substructure. Markings on the armor were also consistent with images of a man, or humanoid, seen in several of the tablets and stones found on the other expeditions. The same markings were also noted on the helix stone. Despite it being clear that the suit can be activated in some way, no method has been found to do it. It appears to be missing a component, likely the Dumarine himself. Alright. Yep. Yep. Glory Kills, which is also something that this game was really known for, and Eternal as well after it, which we will stream as well. Also, did I start? I forgot to start the time. I'll start it here. <laughs> It'll just get a bit more. Dealing damage to demons will cause them to stagger, which is indicated by a blue highlight. Move into close range, and when the Glory Kill turns, uh, when the highlight turns orange, press F to perform a Glory Kill. Attack demons from any angle, including from above, to, the, you know, to perform different Glory Kills. Glory killing demons will always drop health. Yeah, this is how you heal in this game. Just punching the absolute hell out of your enemies. <laughs> Which is a good way to keep the combat going. Also, thank you.
The UAC shotgun disperses a spread of high-velocity box shots for maximum impact against the enemy, ideally suited for the operative who requires a speedy response for deadly close encounters. The wide coverage of this weapon loses impact at long range. The weapon is forged from a high-quality titanium steel alloy to ensure maximum reliability, repeat range, and yield strength. Yeah, a lot of a lot of things are just going to get little details like that, which I always like. Oh yeah. And hello. Imps. <laughs> These ferocious and adult demons are find all, found all over hell and are often used on the front line in a concentrated attack in either dimension. They revel in battle, feeding off their victims when the hunger takes them. Well, let's uh, feed our hunger then, shall we? Just bumped into this one. And... There we go. Yeah, it is hard mode, so we are just going... We do need to not get hit a lot. Okay, and these things, well... Gore nest. Studies of demons upon entering this dimension have shown that their conduct is not purely vindictive. There is a method behind their actions. When a demon captures their prey, the fresh kill is taken to a temporary ceremonial site where arcane rituals are performed on the pile of blood and gore. When enough corpses have been gathered, the ceremonial site becomes a gore nest. These sites, imbued with hell energy from the rituals, act as umbilical cords to hell. <clears throat> Extreme caution must be taken when approaching a gore nest. Attacking the nest, or indeed any demons within close proximity to the nest, will act as an alarm and siphon more demons from hell. So yeah, they are encounter starters. Oh dear gods. I got disturbed that it's actually made of people. It may explain why it screamed when you destroyed it. Yep. Okay, just gotta keep moving, gotta keep running. They will... Guy... Oops, ow. They will lead their attacks. Oop. And we can just normally melee as well with F. So, the goal is to keep moving and be unpredictable. Don't let them lead their attacks like that. Okay. And that was that. Pick up. And uh, yeah, that's going to be the dance of this game. Just continuously killing, killing, killing. <laughs> Rip and tear until it is done. I cannot be allowed to leave this place. She was ruining everything. Well. Leave we will then. <laughs> when you're told not to I'm do something. I'm to take full responsibility for the horrible events of the last 24 hours, but you must understand. Our interest in their world was purely for the betterment of mankind. Everything has clearly gotten out of hand now, yes. But it was worth the risk. I assure you. Let's uh, agree to disagree. <laughs> Let's raise some hell. <laughs> okay, some armor chits. Yeah, this is not a game for just sitting still. Camping things out. Let's see. Brief yeah. history. <clears throat> Despite the discovery of liquid water on Mars in the early 21st century, the colonization of Mars had little appeal beyond exploration for the next century. With the discovery of the Argent Fracture, a transdimensional stream of unrefined Argent Plasma, in 2095, the settling and mining Mars became both practical and essential to meet the vast energy demands on Earth. <clears throat> However, the need for atmospheric conversion and terraforming of the Red Planet was a task that seemed insurmountable to all but one corporation, the UAC. 
Through their diligent dedication to technolog technological advancement and forward thinking, an outpost was established in MTC-2096 to extract argent plasma from the fracture. When this plasma is subjected to the UAC's fermonic transference pattern, argent energy is produced. This remarkable uh, venture act eventually bore fruit as argent energy became the primary power source for all, all of Earth. New visitors to the UAC facility may take for granted the rich atmosphere while on the surface, but it should be remembered that just a few short decades ago, Mars was an inhospitable desert that could support no life. So yeah, that's why we're just running around without... Uh, well, I'm pretty sure the Praetor suit would count as a spacesuit. So hello. Yeah, do, you do kind of wonder in which areas they had a forest and all that, if they even used forests. Yep, possessed soldier. While well, Lazarus wave exposure does effectively wipe any vestige of human behavior from most of its victims, some subjects continue to display tactical cognition or cognizance posthumously. As, it possessed as with possessed engineers, this does not appear to be random. If an individual has training in combat, as part of the UAC military, the Lazarus Wave event will transform them into more than mere slaves. This anomaly further supports the theory that there is some form of genetic coding embedded within the Lazarus Wave particles, which governs the outcome of Lazarus Wave exposure on a per-case basis. Okay! Sweep them off her feet. Let's see, I'll take that. And then we just have a big pile of armor here. So let's just grab that. And with these normal possessed, we can just punch our way through them. Holy. Just shove him through the rock. Uh, let's see. Yeah, got some ammo again. Glory kills will also get you ammo, so that's another reason to go for them. There you are. That, and yeah, that's bound to happen sooner or later. <laughs> yeah, this game is you know, can be pretty tough. But you did it, take it on a hard difficulty. Yeah. And yeah, I I don't think we can change difficulty midway through. But yeah, I still want to try and get through it on that. Like, I, there, I think there were only a few specific points where I got actively stuck at one point or another. But nothing too bad, I think. Unless my skills as a shooter on shooter games have really degraded enormously. And yeah, part of this game is also just target prioritizing. So in this case... If yeah, the possessed soldiers take preference because they're the most dangerous here. Oops, oops. I think we avoided an attack there. I hear you. Holy. I yeah, man. Where they make the next Doom game. Yeah, I still need to play really? Eternal, and that is why, in part, I want to stream this game. You haven't... You haven't played Eternal? Nope. What? But I know a lot what? of it. Uh, all I can say is this, that the other game they plan to do in the series will probably be a prequel. Okay. I mean, it may not be as fast paced, but more. Jimmy. Basically, they compared this one and Eternal as a sports car, 
for the first series it will be more like a monster truck. Okay, <laughs> certainly a description. As in, you will not be on your own all over the place. You may be slower, more technical, but you will be very hard hitting. Okay. And we're full on ammo. I think the reason is to, to like, it, it probably it will take place before he got uh, empowered. Uh, yeah. Let's see. A little side place here where we can... Oh. Oh, oh, thank you. Key card. We always need these in these games. And there's a little something up here that we saw. Aww. Uh, there are two UAC Marine Guy collectibles in every map. Each one you find will unlock a model that can be viewed by visiting the collectibles menu. See if you can find them all. <laughs> oh, God. That. Oh, Ooh, grenades. Let's see. Control or middle mouse button to use an equipment item when you have it available. Equipment items are in a recharge timer that must complete before they can be used again. Okay. Catch. And yeah, these normal guys we can just melee our way through. They are just basically the most father of father you can find. It's more possessed, not of interest. Really, a rip and tear until it's done. Yeah. We say as we rip off an arm. <laughs> Oh, map. Okay. The mission tab will show you the auto map, available mission challenges and exploration items that can be found in your current mission. Let's see, there are three secrets around, of which I've, we found one with the little guy, I think. And then there's a field drone and an elite guard somewhere around here. And let's see, yeah, there's the little guy that we found. There's some data that we found. And there's the room where we came from. Let's see. Area scanning technology unlocked. Okay. Always good for a game to have a good map. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oversized USB in your chest. <laughs> Praetor token suit token. The Praetor suit tab allows you to upgrade a variety of the Praetor suit's cap uh, capabilities. Here you can spend freighter suit tokens on available uh, upgrades and view requirements to unlock the remaining categories. Yep, we can upgrade our health, armor, ammo, and let's see, environmental resistance. These upgrades provide resistance to environment, explosive, area scanning technology, okay, equipment system, power up effectiveness, and dexterity. Okay. Require four weapons to unlock these upgrades, and we need to find enough power up to get that one. Let's see, we have one token. We can't upgrade any of these yet. I'm pretty sure we need these for that, which we have none at the moment. Uh, let's see, might as well upgrade this. Okay, we have some secret sense. The compass will pulse when near secret areas. Okay. And Automap reveals exploration items in a wider area. Let's take that. And then we need two for the secret sense. So yeah, we want to find these guys. The elite guards. Alright. Elite guard is a company okay. of security personnel charged with protecting the Lazarus Project research and maintaining orders throughout the Argent facility. The distinct red uniforms help distill a calming influence upon <laughs> among UAC employees and they are known to be level-headed, disciplined, and fair, but firm. 
Their suits contain cybernetic augmentations, which give the elite guards an advantage should they need to quell any disturbances. The augmentations allow them to be faster, stronger, and more resilient to injury, which apparently was still not enough. Oh, dear God. Oh, there's an imp somewhere. Yeah, there's the imp. Just blow his freaking legs off. Let's see. Armor. We want that. Anything else around here? Nope. There were too many enemies around, so they were bound to show up sooner or later. So, okay. teleporting around. I see you up there. That way. Then let's see. That way. Okay. Any more of you? Let's see. There is an area under there, it seems. But the door needs to be opened. Hmm. We'll see. We'll find how to open that. I, I don't know this game 100% through, of course. Oh, these things. Yeah, we can get <laughs> we can get uh, upgrades for our guns. Let's see, charge Ooh. shot. Hold the weapon mod button to charge up a three-round burst with a tire spread. And we have explosive shots. Which basically turns this thing into a grenade launcher. Ooh. Let's go for this one. I have to say this. You asked me if you wanted this as a. Uh, asked me if we should have this as a side quest. Yeah. And. Yeah, I was thinking we could have had the Dawn of War and then they had this as a side quest, but now I wonder. Since after Tomb Raider, we're going to. Uh, Prince of Persia? Yes, but we haven't decided what we we do after Camille. Uh, I'm thinking Ori and the Blind Forest. Oh, right. I almost forgot that one. <laughs> All right, That's... then. Yeah, Ori and the Blind Forest. And yeah, we we can see where we want to put this one in. I, I want to put it rather quickly. Maybe we can mix it around with Dawn of War. Or put it through this as a side quest to Dawn of War. Because I really do that? want to get to uh, Doom Eternal from everything I've heard of it. Yeah, I, I feel like Dawn of War and Doom together in sync like a yeah one is in the main game and one is the side quest for both of uh how to say this same feel uh, yeah uh, we could maybe do ori then doom then the second ori game and then doom eternal i'd be up for that A soldier. Okay. There is a cooldown on the. Oh, what the, where the. Why was it going backwards there? There is a cooldown on the burst. Okay. Yeah, you can die really quick. Maybe four streams we would. It would be better to put it on normal, but yeah, we'll see. Let's uh, this forwards. Okay, we're back here. Hmm. Yeah, I, a part of me does want to stream this on hard, but maybe for, well, the sake of everyone, it would be smarter to put it on normal, so to avoid getting stuck in places. Yeah, as well. It would probably make commentary easier. Yeah. Since we would, it, it would involve a lot less annoyed grunting. Yeah. 
And uh, this game will be really big commentary. Especially on your end. But we can end up uh, making those grunting permanent. And yeah, you can see how quickly we lose health when we do get hit. We can upgrade our health later. Holy. Get down here, you. Big health. Let's see. Uh, yeah, probably better to do it on normal then. Like, I know that I can get through this game on hard, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Mixing that together with commentating would make it a lot harder. No pun intended there. Not really that it is a pun. Yeah, like... Oh, bloody. I don't know if sure that would be help on YouTube. Like, sure, you could out every t each time you die and then you get stuck, but that means you also lose a lot of commentary and have to re -say a lot of things as well, so... Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, normal will probably be best. If Ex uh, Xterra ever sees this, he's going to claim heresy for playing this on anything but the harder difficulties. Wait, who? Uh, someone from another server that I know. Okay, hopefully they can understand this for the sake of an easier commentary. Like, I have. E yep. Yep. Regardless if it's harder or not, I have, will have it easier. You would have it harder. Yeah. And the checkpoints are a bit further apart than I actually remember them, it seems. Since... Oh, okay, not, not. I thought we were going to be put back further. Okay, yeah, for everyone's sanity, when we do get this normal mode then... Unless we... Hmm, I very much doubt that we can swap difficulty mids in way. But yeah. Completely whip all three shots there. Uh, I saw another imp. Where are you? Yeah, you are. Reduced him to a fine mist. <laughs> This way, I'm more possessed. Did, did we just shove their head into it, their foot into their own face? Like I know people say that putting their foot in their mouth, but that's a bit little. <laughs> Should not forget the shot, the grenades. Seems we've got to make a bit of a choke point here. Yeah, there's a timer going off. Oop, another one. Okay, it seems that the glory kills do leave us a little bit open for immediately after. Oop. We probably don't want to overdo it.
go. This thing comes with an auto with a charge shot normally. Should have gone for the glory kill, but I will. Uh, yeah, let's just keep going until everything nearby is finally dead. And then we'll call um, it. Then, then again, Hale? for the Doom Slayer, everything nearby would basically be everything on the planet. Yeah, I was gonna say, this is the Doom game. There's always something near. Okay. Let's call it here then. A, yeah, a definite yes. Just, it's just a question of where we will put it in the current stream schedule. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. So, I, I don't feel like... We, <clears throat> I feel like we probably should do both all right first before we do Doom. Okay. And it be, will be a very weird shift from brutal to weirdly cold to brutal again. <laughs> to weirdly, you, you hear the self. It could actually be a fun contrast. And uh, yeah, this is the fourth game that we have prepared. And I can say this, this is not a, this is going to be a no, but... Like with Dinkum and Don't Starve, it's not because it's a bad game or anything. This is down well. And, yeah, basically, the entire goal of this game is to go as low as you can go. Down this well. Down well. And just survive. We have four hit points and we have eight, well... We have gun shoes. What? Yeah. Definitely some old school stuff, but also, what the heck? Yeah. Ow. Uh, yeah, we can stomp enemies, but it is a bit risky, as you can see. Uh, let's see, what's this? We got a laser. Yeah, we can pick up different weapons in side rooms like this. this well, very obviously have different effects. We want those crystals for currency. Oh yeah, this is basically a downwards Mario. Let's see, here we have machine gun. Yeah, you'll be constantly swapping guns with this thing, or with this game. There you go. Oh yeah, a fun little game, but again, not really our style. use our weapons to well, attack downwards and slow our descent a bit. And they're going very heavy on the retro feel. Yep. Especially with the music. You can even unlock some extra stuff to make it look even more retro. Oh dear god. Yeah, I can see us not giving it this one a full time, but still. Yeah. I feel like we already seen enough, almost. Yeah, there's also roguelike elements, because, well, you can restart real fast, and you have these random upgrades at the end. The gem attractor, getting gems recharges gun boots, and more upgrades to choose from plus gain one HP. Let's do that, since we lost one. Okay, I've never really gotten far in this game, so I can't really claim to be any good at it. So let's just see how far we can go until we die, and then we'll move on to the next game. There we go, we want those gems. Enemies that are above you are, of course, a lot more dangerous, so you want to... Out you want to be careful with your descent, and okay, blue, entirely blue enemies will hurt you if you try to land on them. Yep. Yeah, you, you can see how quickly you can just lose health. Oh. Shop. Let's see. Rice ball, car battery curry. Plus two charge, must be in the weapon. Yeah, let's just heal. <laughs> And try and survive. Yeah. The blue size on enemies is where they can hurt you. And there we go. Yeah, well, I think. 
I think you can see you why I never got said. far in this. <laughs> oh dear there, gods. There is progressions throughout, like with the the bar there. Every gem that you collect will get put into that, and with that you will unlock extra stuff. And yeah, we also have this only find gun modules, and then we have just locked stuff as well. And yeah, that's how quickly you can restart again. Yeah. Uh, pallets. Yeah. Virtual Boy, Game Boy, Aqua, Matcha. <laughs> yeah. And, okay, is this the original? I, I, and I guess there's not really an original color or anything, but yeah. Nice little game again. Uh, timer, volume. Oh, okay, I could have enlarged this further. Oh, well. Oh. <laughs> okay, it comes with its own sidebars. <laughs> okay. Yay! A, a nice little game. I think it is pretty cheap, if not outright free. But, yeah. Um, next up, we have something... This is, al this is also a definite no. And uh, I'm only showing this off because I promised to skip less games. Because, well, uh... I see nothing. Eh? I, I don't see the game. I, I'm, I'm only seeing black and hawk white screen at the moment. Oh, yeah. This, this... Okay, that's because this game refuses to... Uh, well, even if you don't see it, you can probably hear the music and you can guess from that. Actually, no. I, I heard this so song from a meme. Yeah. This is, this is ba this quote-unquote game is Dr. Livesley Rum and Death Edition, which is basically a quickly slapped together game based on the meme where you just go around as, well, the titular Dr. Livesley gunning down pirates. So, yeah. Uh -oh. It refuses to work in windowed modes, but uh yeah. <laughs> It's just um it's just a meme thing that someone slapped together. I showcased sort of it. <laughs> Let's just move on. Uh, and yeah. What the it, hey? Like I the meme is nice and all with how people have been making animations with other characters based on it, but it's it's not an interesting game if you can call it that as anything. You're just it's not it doesn't even count as a boomer shooter. Since you move slowly and yeah, there's probably some people who enjoy it, and it also uses just Russian hard bass as its yeah, as its music. Uh, but yeah. Anyways, next game that we have here is Dragon Age Origins. It's well. I don't think it needs much introduction, since it's basically the sister series to the Mass Effect series. Yeah, bloody I forgot to how wonderful music here is. Uh, I should probably say this. I have respect for Dragon Age series, but I don't love it. Like, I have tried to get into the lore and such, but after a while I just didn't... I just, me, it doesn't connect with me well, too well, but I do respect it. And yeah. Uh, from what... Uh, this first game is considered like a, a masterpiece in uh, RPG as, as an RPG game, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. uh, I've never really played it myself. I have seen playthroughs of it. And yeah, it, it is a good game, but it's yeah. not really my style. Same. Like people have said it was a basic bullish gate revived in spirit. Yeah. Let's start her up and start the timer. Oh uh, yeah, and I don't think we be stream this. Today. The Chantry teaches us that it is the hubris of men which brought the Darkspawn into our world. The mages had sought to usurp heaven, but instead they destroyed it. They were cast out, twisted and cursed by their own corruption. 
they returned as monsters, the first of the Darks. They became a blight upon the lands, unstoppable and relentless. The Dwarven kingdoms were the first to fall, and from the deep roads, the dark spawn drove at us again and again until finally we neared annihilation. Women from every race, warriors and mages, barbarians and kings. The Grey Warden sacrificed everything to stem the tide of darkness and prevailed. It has been four centuries since that victory, and we have kept our vigil. We have watched and waited for the Darkspawn to return. But those who once called us heroes have forgotten. We are few now, and our warnings have been ignored for too long. Seen with my own eyes what lies on the horizon. Maker, help us all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, oh lordy heck. Yeah, I think I think I liked it in the first game, but then when I played the other games. I realized it they moved more and more towards a direction I did not like. Yeah, this, I felt this... disconnected <laughs> from it. Yeah, Dragon Age uh, 2 is uh, controversial to say, since, well, it was basically rushed through, but well, it was definitely rushed through, but yeah. Uh, the background you select will determine which six distinct you know, or opening stories you will play through. It, is, it also affects how characters respond <coughs> through, to you throughout the game. Let's see. We have our race that we can choose. We have, of course, humans. The most numerous, yet the most divided of all ra the races. Only four times have uh, they ever united under a single cause, the last being centuries ago. Religion and the Chantry play a large part in human society. This distinguishes them culturally from elves and dwarves more than anything else. Humans can be warriors, rogues, or mages. And then we have the elves, who for against stereotype are actually shorter here. Generally, elves are considered to be taller and such. Uh, depends. Let's see. Once enslaved by humans, most elves have all but lost their culture, scrounging an uh, impoverished living in the slums of human cities. Only the nomadic Dalish tribes still cling to their traditions, living by the bow and the rule of their old gods as they roam the ancient forests. Welcome nowhere else. Elves can be warriors, rogues, or mages. And we have dwarves. Rigidly bound by caste and tradition, the dwarves have been waging a losing war for generations, trying to protect the lost stronghold of their once vast underground empire from the darkspawn. Dwarves are very tough and have a high resistance to all forms of magic, thus preventing them from becoming mages. Plus one strength, dexterity, and plus two constitution. 10% chance to resist hostile magic. Okay. Uh, let's go as a dwarven fighter then. And Okay. This also narrows down which uh, backgrounds we can have then. 
Yeah, I mean, I went very far as a Dwarven fighter when I played this. No, okay. Also, another thing I did also end up disliking about this and the other games is in other games where you have a party, where you have affinity, friendship, and all that, I usually do it really well. But in this game, bloody heck, it's annoying. Okay. Basically, you may, like, doesn't matter what you do. It's all, it feels like whatever is choice you pick, 70 or 80 percent time someone's it's not just not just they just get mildly annoyed they get pissed let's see the six backgrounds that we can ha that we have access to we have the dalish elf proud of your role as one of the few true elves you have always assumed you would spend your life with your tribe until a chance encounter with a relic of your people's past threatens to tear you away from everything you have ever known then we have dwarf commoner Born castless in a land where rank is everything, bound as the lackey and thug of a local crown lord who has spent your life invisible, until chance trusts you into the spotlight, where you can finally prove whether you will be defined by your actions or your birth. And we have City Elf. You, was always, you have always lived under the heavy thumb of your human overlords, but when a local lord claiming his privilege with the bride shatters your wedding day, the simmering racial tensions explode in a rain of vengeance. That sounds like definitely a start. <laughs> and then we have, well, no, ma no matter if you are elven human or elven mage, we have the magi start. Wielding a powerful as dangerous as it is potent, you know that curse and that magic is a curse for those lacking the will to control it. You anxiously await your harrowing, the wanton chance to prove yourself against the demons lurking without and within. Succeed or be slaughtered by the knights who warred against your kind. I think I think SF Debris did a series on this game from start to finish with a lot of detail as well. And I think he went with a mage. Which is a very interesting start from what I remember of it. Uh, let's see. Next up we have Human Noble. Which apparently is the only way you can start besides a mage here. Born to wealth and power second only to royalty. You find your training in both dis in the, yeah, diplomacy and battle put to the test. As your brother leads the bulk of your family's forces in war yeah, to war in the south. And lastly we have Dwarf Noble. As the favorite child of the Dwarven King, you proudly take up your first military command, only to learn that the deadly intrigues of family and sycophants may pose a greater danger even than even the battlefields. Okay, which of these shall we start off then? Or rather, which of these did you start with, and we'll pick the other one then. I forgot if I went commoner or noble. I think I, think I went noble. Let's go with commoner then. Greedy. Um, I know I tried the commoner as well, but yeah, they were, I think it was the new one I went the longest with. I have lost the spell. Greetings. How do you do? Greetings. Greetings. Ugh, my spell. Let's go with the violent voice and let's see. Points to spend. Um, might as well put those there. Uh, these don't generally don't really need too much explaining. Strength is how hard, hard you hit. Dexterity, how hard you shoot. Willpower, uh, determination and mental fortitude. Okay, some more spells for mages. More stamina for battle techniques. And okay, so we will want to put some in there. Magic, not really of much use to a fighter. Cunning determines how well a character learns and reasons. Okay. And constitution, well, how hard you can take hits. Let's see. Oh, points to spend. Coercion, stealing, trap making, survival, herbalism, poison making. And let's go with combat tactics, since that seems the most fitting there. The talents. Uh, let's see. Powerful. Through training and hard work, the warrior gains greater health and reduces the fatigue. Might as well. Precise striking, dual weapon, archery, weapon, and shields. Um, might as well go with this dwarven shield wall and take a sheet. Yeah, go down this lane. 
Uh, to the turn. There. There. Deep beneath the frostback mountains sits Orzammar, largest and proudest of the two remaining dwarven cities. Once the seat of an underground empire, Orzammar now stands alone, cut off from the world by the darkspawn, still clinging to the memory of its former glory. Below the vast statues and gilded halls where the noble families play at politics, the lower castes live in their shadows, scurrying to serve like their ancestors before them. Below that is you. You are castless, the dirty secret staining Orzammar's perfect society, forced, along with your sister, to sell your services to the crime lord Barat. To the rest of Orzammar, you are proof that the castless deserve their fate. But you know you do what you have to, the same as everyone, just to survive. Yeah, this world is not a kind one. Gambling on you forever, precious. You've got a sweet look, something to light a man on fire, but you got to make it count. Please, Barat, can we not do this in front of my brother? Why not? He knows the slope of the land, don't you, boy? Uh, let's see. Right, that's sweet. Before me, your sister was just another duster. Now check her out. Raids down to here, gold cap teeth. She can recite elf poetry and play the string harp. Every man's dream. All she's got to do is find a lord, squeeze out some kid who looks like him, and we're all living the easy life in the diamond quarter. Please don't get involved. You know that never goes well. I think this other way slowly lost interest. They're like. I can handle some dog themes out, but the Dragon Age uh, series entirely is... It, it's so dark, and I, I actually lost interest probably from that. Okay, it's not full grimdark, but it is dark. I'll treat her however I like, as long as you both eat off my plate. You keep your head down and say I to any job I decide is low enough for scum like you. In return... I put out coins so you can doll yourself up and get a belly full of some nobleman's brat. Then you both go free, and I get to join the family and be called my lord for the rest of the little prince's life. And let's see, can we go? We can go into the options from here. Uh... Well. Unless I start seeing results, we're going to renegotiate. I'm giving you another week, Precious. If you haven't found a patron, you're back to sweeping streets. But I have. I've met someone. That is, I didn't want to promise, but he seemed interested. Yeah, seems like the entire idea here is to basically baby trap a noble. Which is, well... Your buddy Lesky's waiting outside. He knows what I'll need from you today. Don't even think about bungling this job. Your whole family's on loose sand with me right now. And I know you don't have anywhere else to turn. I'm sorry you had to see that. You know how desperate the nobles are for more children? They can barely field enough soldiers to hold the walls against the Darkspawn. If I could give one of them a son, the whole house would celebrate, and we'd all be raised up to noble caste to join the family. It's what Barat's betting on. That's why he paid for my clothes, my voice lessons. He wants to share the reward. Uh. Stay out of trouble. I'll see you tonight. Okay, nope, tactical view. Uh, let's see, can, can we play it from a variety of tactical viewpoints? Use the mouse wheel. Okay. Uh, well, pause. You can issue orders to your character. Right click on your de desired destination. Uh, now, as a move order, you can issue orders in real time or while paused. Press. P okay. Yeah, this is a real time. <clears throat> 
Yeah, good. A day bunch of brain shots. What? It does that. Oh, they, I saw, I saw they, they last moon, but uh, when I was younger, I did enjoy it a bit, but the more I play, the more I dislike the armor, the theme, the aesthetic, and I did, did not feel so well interested in the lore. Yes. I get I don't hate it, I just don't feel like I've I, I been room for. I have respect for it, but I'm very neutral to it. Okay. Interact with the mouse, right mouse button as well. Time. I was starting to think I'd have to bust in and get an eyeful of that spicy sister of yours. Growl. Oh, God. People wonder him. where that grumpy old dwarf image comes from. But fine. Boss says we're out for a search and discipline. One of his smugglers is holding out on him. Name's Oskias. Some servicer. Barat got word that he's been selling shipments topside that never make it to Barat's ears down here. He wants us to find the rotter and see what goods he's holding back. King. You know, gold, lyrium, spices. Anything that Barat might cut someone's head off to get. Poetry to my ears, Selraka. Let's see then. Controlling party members. A new party member has joined you. You can take direct con control of this character directly by left clicking on his or her portrait or body. Alternatively, you can use the tactics menu to adjust how the AI controls them. Uh, this one? Okay. No. Oh. Okay, I remember you can actually get pretty in depth with how you or how you have them well do things. Oh, you can. Hey there, Carter boy. Care to try a taste of this? Any way you like it. Let's see. Now, where the hell would that guy even be in the first place? Though, yeah, I might have started the timers a bit too early, but we have about seven and a half minutes left to go. Oh, gather your party and win some worths. Or fourth, not worth, but. Oh, that's where the Border Gate reference almost there. Oh? Found her body, did they? No, tools. Signs of camp, things like that. Paragon or not, Bronca's dead. She's been gone two years. No one survives the deeps that long. Let's see. This place is going to the nub. Uh, I probably should have asked yeah, where to find this guy. Can we I still? I barely remember. We won't get very far if you keep stopping to chat. What's up? Uh, we... Well, you know my suggestion. Go where the ale is. Man's a surfacer. So all he usually gets is that swill they make from grain or whatever. When he comes to Orzammar, he'll head straight for the real thing. Lycan malt, straight up, eight bits of tumbler. Mm-hmm. Lycan malt, <laughs> really? Now you're showing some sense. Come on. Okay, but where is the closest bar then? Uh, we have Barat's shop. I assume oh, this yeah, pile David. of worthless junk belongs to you. You realize it's in the way, and that the patrols will not be able to come through. Move it, or I shall have it thrown out in the deep roads, and you with it. I'm so sorry, my lord, but they told me to move my goods over here. I, I couldn't even set up shop in my usual place. Nonsense. It's true. Uh, they said that the servants needed to polish the floors on that side of the commons in preparation for the new commander's first commission. Hmm, yes. The new Idukan commander's feast is tomorrow, isn't it? Uh, I suppose it can't be helped then. I'm guessing that is a uh, reference to the dwarf and noble backstory because i'm pretty sure all six of these backstories do happen at the same guy yeah. time let's see proving rounds not really where we want to go okay where is the tavern then this is probably going to be blocked off as well they should send someone to pick up the trash yeah this is going to be blocked off until that is cleared yeah, bloody heck. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna stream this. Again, I understand why people love this game. I do. Just... It didn't get... Uh, didn't really bond too well with me, sadly enough. Okay. Uh, okay, just forcing us to go through here. Let's see. Do you want to equip drag and item from this icon? Okay. And to equip, just pull it back. 
for easy access, place them in your quick bar. Okay. Yep. There we go. Okay. The ancestors were smiling on my bed. They say the warrior gets another round from the house. So the Grey Wardens can look for candidates. Uh, there he is. Hey, I was saving that seat. That's real thoughtful, Ascaius. It's tiring work looking for you. How do you know my name? Oh no, you're not from Barat, are you? Because that would be too much. I don't think I could handle You mean you're not here to kill me? Let's see. Making sure you didn't accidentally pocket any processed lyrium. You know. Look, I, I always been loyal to Barat. He's been good to my family. I, I know how much I owe him. Let's see. I haven't. I, I wouldn't. I'm getting out of here. You you two are mad. Barat knows I'd never betray him. I'll tell him myself. You're not going anywhere. Could everyone who isn't about to die please turn around for a moment? This may be unpleasant. Thank you. You, you can't do this. Help! Call the guardsmen! This is murder! You two let me know if you need anything. I'll be in the back. <laughs> really? It's just a bunch of rocks. You're gonna kill me for that? Then let me go. Tell Barat you killed me. I can run to the surface. He's never gotta hear of me again. I'll give you the lyrium. Do whatever you want with it. Give it to Barat. Sell it yourself. I don't care. Keep the lyrium. It's worth plenty to the right buyer. Are you breathing smoke? Barat will kill you if he catches you with his lyrium. It's... Well, that's a whole other story. We need to sell it before we go back to Barat. And to someone who won't run to him. Tell you what. Cut me in 50 and we'll go to Olinda. She's a merchant. She likes me and refuses to work with the old man. <laughs> Already just going to backstab... Uh, well, who is definitely going to, to backstab us sooner or later. I have to tell Barat he's dead. If he ever finds out... He won't. I swear. You'll never see me in Orzammar again. Thank you. You're as noble as you are strong. May the ancestors bless your steps. Okay. And with that, we now have the stuff. Now we just need to find who to sell it to. And I'm guessing things have opened up now. Nice little thing That's to keep it smart. locked. Oh. If Barat finds out Oskaius ran, he'll kill you. He'll kill me. He'll make you kill me, then yourself. Then he'll probably stew us and serve us to the poor. Uh, so, I want you to pay attention to all the body movements. For you will have seen all these body movements before. Uh, yeah, it's, that's something that was in Mass Effect as well. That there was very limited body oh. movement. Oh, no, 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 no. Hill. It's not only Mass Effect. Hmm? It's Star Wars. And Kingdom of Amalur and a few other games. Yeah. But the animation will cook it all over. We should sell this quick and report back before Barat starts wondering what's taking so long. Um, unless you think we should give it all to Barat. And yeah, I don't mean that they are similar. They, they all the exact same movement. And that's how it me when I realized. There's so many games using the same engine or something? Likely. He'd probably buy that. If he knew what Ascaius was hoarding, he wouldn't have sent us to look, right? Unless he was testing us. Oh, but... Oh, I don't think it is supposed to, to reuse the engine. She used to give me cross up her weeks end loaf when I was little. She's got a soft spot for me. And she hates Barat. Whew. You should hear her go on about how it's blackmail to pay protection money and the cast list deserve better. She's got a stall in the comments Timer. not too far from Tapsters. She'll give us a fair deal and Barat won't hear about it. Hmm. Uh, right, yeah. Again, nothing wrong to reuse the engine, but to reuse the animations over and over and over like that, that it becomes jarring? That I have a bit of a problem with. 
Let's see. That's where we're shop. Probably not a good idea to run into there. Uh, but yeah. I think I might try at least the the starting stories of this game, but I've already seen how most of the rest of the game goes. But uh, yeah, beyond that, uh, yeah, this <clears throat> not really my type, but then again, it has been a long time since I've played like a long RPG. And the last one I tried to play was Neverwinter Nights 2, and I kept losing my save files for that. So I had to start over again and again and again. I finished that one. Okay. <clears throat> but yeah, I, I just got I just got rather tired of restarting with that. But uh, yeah, that's the last game for now. So let's have a look. Dinkum and Don't Starve. Uh, nice games, but no. Same for Downwell. And the doc I don't even know why I have that Dr. Livesley quote-unquote game. And yeah, Dragon Age Origins. Also good game, but not for our style. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, don't... not a bad game, just not for our streams. And I, again, I don't hate it. I just don't love it either. Yeah, there are there are a lot better content creators <clears throat> out there who have already covered the game to death and would probably do it a lot better than I ever could. Yeah. And yeah, Doom. That's a definite yes. We're just going to have to find where to put it. <clears throat> yeah, it, it will be soon. Sooner or later for... Actually, yeah. Have you been thinking about it? All right, the Aura games are not that long. Not really. Like, the second one can take... A... They they have both... Yeah, they both have their places where you could get stuck for a while. But after you get what it wants you to do, it does get a lot easier to get through there. For now, though, let's go look for someone to raid. So we open up the browser, Twitch, and then double check that the place is muted. And let's have a look. Uh, Dogger Douglas McDog is online with Tomb Raider 2. They are doing their challenge still, it seems. Uh, no loads, no meds, all secrets and pistols only. That's definitely a challenge, yeah. Then we have I'm Nice with Monster Hunter World. Grim the Wolf with Yes, Your Grace. Okay. Uh, I think we've heard, seen that one pop up a few times. Uh, it's one of these uh, cal these kingdom simulators. Or maybe simulator isn't Kinda. not really the right word. It, 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 <laughs> kingdom simulator slash story. Okay. Next we have Sour Wall with, with Wall Worlds. Can't say I've ever heard of this one. Yeah, I've not heard of this one either. Uh, WBPL76 is streaming Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Puffle Cakey is online with Sunhaven. Then we have <clears throat> Kiri Natsuyoko with Mass Effect 3. And Horatius the Dwarf is just chatting at the moment. Okay. Um, I'm thinking Wall World then, even though uh, it seems like they're it seems like they're AF yeah, they're doing something, I think. You know. Um, I recognize that signboard. Camp Crystal Lake. Okay. Run. Yeah, they're having a little break or something, I think. Oh, dear. Okay. You want to suggest anyone else? Or look at the recommended? Uh, let's take a look at the recommended. Okay. We have Wolf uh, Machina with House Flipper. That's playing the Farm Flipper DLC, it seems. Uh, Ape Mode Gaming is streaming Warframe. Uh, okay. It's, it seems they're still rather early into the game since they have their mastery rank in the title at level 6. Uh, I, yeah, I should get back into Warframe sometime. Uh, <clears throat> what was my mastery rank again? Like 27, 28 or ish? Which is, well, very high. I think the maximum at the moment is 30. Then we have Dark Eden Twenty One, who let's see, is on a break. It yeah, looks like they're playing tabletop Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, next up we have Babella Blalam, who is playing Warhammer Forty K Gladius, and Mashu Kitty with <laughs> the Murder of Sonic the Hedgehog, that April Fool's game that Sega released. <clears throat> Wait, 
Oh, good gods. Uh, from what I hear, it's just a parody uh, murder mystery-ish game. And free. <clears throat> Anyways, well, though. This is free. Any of those? Or shall we go raid the walrus? Uh... War World or Warhammer Gladius? Uh, let's see. Yeah, let, let's go with Sour Walrus then. I'm curious about this game. Let's see. Slash raid and then paste their name. But before we start, of course, thank you everyone who has been watching now or later. <clears throat> uh, thank you, Jess, for chilling along for a while. And where has the chat program gone? Okay, why was that minimized? Oh well. And thank you as always, Drakir. You're welcome as always, my friend. And uh, now, uh, <clears throat> I want to stream Binary Domain again tonight, uh, but I'll have to check in with Rom if he's available or not. And if he's not, then let's see. I'm not really sure which to more Underworlds or more Guacamele. I'm. Um no, we are almost done with Guacamole. Mm, yeah, let's let's go with Underworld then. So it has had a, a two full streams this week. <clears throat> I'll be up for that. Okay, for now though, let's start with the raids. And uh yeah. Um like like we said, likely stream again. Mm, unless something pops up, of course. But yeah. For now, thank you all again for watching, and until next time, have a nice day, and until then. Be safe, everyone. Watch out for demons. <laughs> and do <doom> Marines. <laughs>